what happens when we think about the S&P, the SPX, the ES futures, and we look at volatility? In this update, we're going to talk about support and resistance based on time and historical volatility. All right, gang, Raggy here. So let's jump into the five minute and the daily time frame when it comes to what is probably one of the most popular symbols to trade right now amongst traders, and that is S&P futures and the SPX. What we want to do here uh, most of the time is at least get a read on the ES because the ES is going to have really good, nearly 24 hour liquidity and price action. And it'll give you an idea of what happened in the Asian session, UK, European, pre-market in the US and then into the US session. I got a nice 24 hour feel. It just makes the indicators flow a whole lot better. However, as I look at the ES, I can think about, well, sure, the MES micro, uh, the SPY uh, spy, right, our ETFs, and of course, the SPX. So let me show you what SPX looks like with the hourly price movement ranges and the daily price movement ranges. So the five minute chart is on the left, the daily is on the right, and both have the historical volatility tool running. Uh, this is the HPMR. And this is the DPMR, which we'll be releasing uh, early next year. The SPX, right off the bat, bell rings, 10 a.m. This is what this is the edge we caught. That edge is the hourly price movement range green zone. I get, a, I get these questions a lot about SPX. Now, I'm going to tell you all, gang, straight up, I like the ES better, but it really is a choose-your-own-adventure because you have ES, you have MES as far as the micro goes. You have the SPY, which I like to trade as well, and of course, uh, the SPX. So four different ways to play this, but I'll, I get a lot of questions about what do the HPMRs look like on the SPX itself. A couple other things to note. Buy only. Look at the structure of the SPX. Green momentum, green trend. There's no short here, gang. It's a buy only. So again, we know directional bias long before, at least 10, 15 minutes before, the hourly price movement range edge support was caught. Moving up, the resistance zone also will rely on time, will rely on volatility, and there it sits. And that's the first part of the day, support to resistance. It, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. But what you're going to see that most traders are not going to see with the hourly price movement ranges is where the volatility based support and resistance is. And when you have the volatility based support and resistance, this is basically invisible to most traders, right? It's not going to be seen in classic support and resistance most of the time. I, I love giving our community that edge. Now, towards the latter part of the day, this is cool. Uh, Lorna Bott, who a lot of you know, she's in our futures room, options room, my sector secrets mastery. She said, Rog, you know, one of the things that a lot of traders are curious about is going into the close, you know, what about the zones to the top and the bottom and a potential iron condor? And I said, you know, that's interesting because it's not something that I would typically do, but a lot of traders want to know, hey, how do I use the resistance? How do I use the support into the close to gain an edge, especially on those zero days to expiration? So what she was talking about is, look, Rob, there's an iron condor, 38.50, 38.90. Now, what the hourly price movement ranges do to help with that zone is take a look. Where's the lower edge of the, you know, you could even take a look at the entire range, but there's your lower edge of the hourly price movement range going into that final 3 to 4 p.m. part of the day. Okay. Then let's go to the downside and take a look at the support. All right, that support's sitting here. This is right around 38. You can see there, 38.50. So if you like 38.50, heck, I bet you could even do 38.60. It's a little bit in front of the in front of the zone. It might, you know, 38.40 is probably overkill, right? I mean, if you wanted to go a little wider, I don't know you have to do that, but 3900 is in play. But look at that 39, 38.90 to 38.50 area. That is, you know, she said, Rock, that's something that she does and she watches for iron condors. And you can see where the zones were identified by the hourly price movement range. 
Another thing to note, this is huge. Uptrend in the morning, buys only, right? Can I take more of a neutral strategy in the afternoon? Take a look at the structure. Absolutely, structure dictates strategy. By 2.55 p.m., we have transitioned out of the uptrend and into a neutral market. And that makes that iron condor much more appealing in a neutral environment. So putting all the pieces together, I get a lot of questions on this. The part that I'm really interested in right now is, you know, having hit the daily price movement range support and now having put in a minor low, confirming that breakout here with today's candle. A lot of you know, I was on Benzinga earlier today. I'm very optimistic about 2023. There's a number of things I am looking at. We'll discuss all that and more. Uh, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, UNH, Energy, Silver, Freeport, Matt Moran in the premium update. As always, gang, thank you so much for being a part of the Simpler community. And if you have any questions, comments, whatnot, feel free to leave them in the, in the comments below. I do check them. I do answer them. And uh, as always, thanks for smashing that like button. I'll see you in the next update. Hey traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.